First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, just so you know who the guy in front of you is talking. Uh, my name is Bill Hoops. I am a, a 20 year Navy guy. I was in the Navy for a long, long time. Uh, once I uh, was done with my teenage years at 20 years old, I decided to join the United States Navy. Uh, I did that for a long, long time, almost uh, just about 17 and a half years. While I was in the Navy, I went and got my bachelor's degree. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology and child development. And then I went and got my master's degree and I have a master's degree in juvenile policy and leadership. So I've got a lot of formal education working with kids. For my time in the United States Navy, I was a Navy recruiter for 10 of those years. Uh, that's where I started working with, uh, you know, 17, 18, 19 year old kids. Uh, and then at 10 years old, my daughter decided that she wanted to pick up the little yellow ball. Right, and just like most of you, she started playing at a very young age. Uh, I was sitting back watching her play at 10 years old and then the little league coach got sick, needed somebody to coach and I decided to step up and coach her softball team. That was 2010. So that was a long time ago. I've been doing softball now for about 15 years. Um, I have played at every single level. I've won at every single level. 2019, I won the 3A state championship here in Florida with Admiral Farragut. I went 9-0 in the Colorado Sparkler in 2021. We won Triple Crown, top five in PGF Nationals, yada, 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 right? I've placed well over four or 500 girls uh, from anywhere from FSU to Weber University to St. John's River. Gracie was one of those kids I helped get committed when she was going through the process. She played for me for a year and a half. I was a little bit of a different coach then. Uh, still fun, still motivating, hopefully, but uh, you know, I've, I've learned a lot over the years about how to uh, work with athletes, specifically softball athletes, uh, the things that you guys go through, the car ride home, the hard pushes, now I get to college, now what do I do, where do I go, how do I handle these things in life, right? Who's a senior? Right, here we go, oh yeah, last one. Last one, get her done, right? What happens next, who's a junior? Right, getting ready to prepare myself for what's next, working on internships, working on where I'm going in my career, working on what happens when the ball goes away. Who's a sophomore? Right, working on getting into the field, working on learning what coach needs me to do, working on getting to that next level. Who's a freshman? Right, just getting started, right? Trying to make a name for myself, coming to this new place, trusting coaches, trusting people, leaving home for the first time. It brings around a whole lot of its own stresses and anxiety. Right, and it brings out a whole lot of fun stuff and it brings out a whole lot of this, meeting new people, doing new things, uh, and going certain ways. So um, anybody deal with stress or anxiety in, in the game, in life, uh, at all, right? Everybody hand up because it starts like here, right? And, and, and at 10 years old, you get put in the game because your parents want to watch you play. They're raising kids, they're having a good time. Right, and then you play at 11, 12, 13, they realize you're good. Now it becomes something that you do for a while and at 14, the game changes, right? And you go from winning the Ricky Ring down the street to now there's a million people outside, now there's a million people watching. Now we put all this false pressure on you of it may happen, it may not happen, this is what we gotta do. Now it becomes in, in, industrialized. Right, it, it, it industrialized, that was my remix there, right? So then you get to, you go all through high school, you do what you gotta do, and now you're here in college, right? So you're here now, right? There's another one, hi Ella. There's another one, right? There's an absolute another, uh, uh, another level to this when you get to college. So I put together uh, a little guide that we're gonna go over to kind of just invoke conversation. I would like for you all to participate. The more you talk, the more you get out of this. Coaches got me here coming four times during the fall. Uh, hopefully, right, we're gonna continue that as long as everything lines up, getting you ready for your season, getting you ready for spring, getting you ready for your either first time on the field as a college athlete or when you hang that ball up for your last time and every, everything in between. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go over understanding our mindset, impact, performance, and on the field. Did anybody like the tacos? Were they good? Right, everybody, I mean, that's the easiest way to get somebody like focus, like tacos, and then they wanna sleep, right? So if you feel you wanna sleep at any point, just come get more tacos, it'll keep you awake, okay? All right, cool. I wanna learn how to handle stress and anxiety in high pressure situations, right? Like the point of coming to college is to get an education. The point of playing on a softball team is to win, compete, have friends, to win, compete, have friends, right? To learn life lessons and ultimately help Coach Allie and everybody here win a national championship. Is that, that's what we're working on here, right?
Right. So with that, the harder you go, the, the more intense you get, the more these situations show up, the higher the level of stress, right? We get to playoffs, right? It's do or die. Now these situations that might be in a regular season game, they become exclamated. They become tougher, right? No, they shouldn't. Because if we prepare your mind now, right? Who's, who's the pitcher in here? Pitcher, who's the best pitcher on the team? Right, Keep, no, no, but see, that's where I want, it's right there, right? That's where I want you to go in your mind, right? She was looking for somebody else, not to call you out, right? But there it is, in your mind, you gotta be the best when you step on the field. Like, that's it, right? That's it, and it doesn't make you like, uh, uh, not humble, it doesn't make you arrogant, it doesn't make you any of that. In your own mind, if you are not standing up for yourself internally, you're going to step into that botter's box and go, oh no, instead of going, here I am, I'm good to go, right? We're thinking about the wrong things when we get in there. Anybody ever been in a slump? Right, just doesn't matter. I could have a tennis racket hitting a watermelon and it just ain't happening, right? It just ain't happening, right? But why does that happen? Anybody ever like really go on a hot streak? You're hitting, you're hitting well, you're smashing every time you get into the box. Right? The mindset is different in those two situations. When I'm hot to trot, I'm standing in the box and I'm going, let's go girl. Bring that to me right now because I'm bringing the thunder from down under and you don't want none of this. You understand what I'm saying? Right? But when I'm in a slump, right? Here's what I'm doing. I'm standing. I got to make sure I'm in my line here. I'm standing in the batter or in the on deck circle and I walk out and I go, all right, she just got a double. I'm down by one. Coach is over there looking, knowing I wasn't in this lineup last week. There's 36 girls on this team. She's telling me every practice I got to work. Okay, here comes that change up. Oh, nope, it was a rise ball. We start thinking more. You start processing more. You start doubting yourself more, right? So the world itself, the game is a game of failure and the world is a cold, nasty, dark place, right? That will take everything from you you understand what I'm saying? And you have to have the wherewithal and the mental well-being to be able to say, who's the best pitcher? Best pitcher in here, raise your hand. All of you, get the lesson, raise your hand. Best hitter in here, who's the best hitter on this squad? Everybody's hand, unless you're a PO, should go up, right? Because here's my thing, if I step into the batter's box and Coach Alley believes that I'm the best, and she tells me that and she says that to me and everybody on the team tells me that, but internally I'm not processing it. You ever have somebody tell you to sit down, be still, don't move, read a book and learn? <coughs> <laughs> well, right, we don't learn that way. I mean, some people do, I can't do it, right? So you have to be able to have internal self-talk, internal processes where you believe in you. You are there for you because when you get out into those lines, they can coach you all week long. They can hit you a hundred balls. They, you can field a hundred balls, right? You can work out, you can get your one-on-ones, you can do all of that. And when the man goes, first inning, I almost said on the clock, but this ain't travel ball no more, right? Right, when the, when the game starts and the first pitch is thrown, it's up to you now, right? You have to stand in that circle and be able to hit your spots when the game is on the line. You have to be able to step into the batter's box and be able to swing the bat at the right moment and be able to lay, lay the bunt down, right? Right, you gotta be able to do what the game requires and all of that starts internally with each and every single one of you. Because if, if, if you think, let me ask you a question. If she was having a bad day, a bad game, she just like over right now, you like, girl, come here, right? You know, like, what would you say to her in a situation where maybe she's having a bad day? Right, that's the answer, right? I would be a teammate. I would tell herself to, hey girl, pick yourself up. Let's go get your mindset right. But how often do we go sit in the dugout and go, God, I suck. Man, I'm no good. Coach is gonna bench me. Man, I'm terrible. Like we have enough wherewithal to tell the person next to us because they're on our team, they're, they're our teammates, we have camaraderie, we enjoy the dugout and the game with our girls, right? But we don't give ourselves the same level of respect. 
We don't give ourselves the same level of respect. It's like, it's like when you were a kid, right? Your, your travel ball coach would say to your dad or your mom when they got upset because you didn't play, they'd be like, you can't talk to me for 24 hours. The world talk about this on Tuesday, right? Right? G give yourself that same amount of time to be able to process what you're doing right and what you're doing that needs improvement. Does that make sense? Right? Because even though one may score a run and win the game and the other one may not, the end result is the same. Check me out. If I hit a home run, grand slam walk off, once I touch home plate and everybody hits my helmet, where do I go? I go to the dugout. What up, G? Been about 240 feet since I seen you, but I'm here, right? Okay, if I strike out, right? She caught it. If I strike out, right, where do I go? The dugout. So once I get there, what I do there determines where I go, where my team goes, and what happens from that moment on. Because whether I hit the home run or I hit the strike, guess what's happening in the circle when the play is over? The pitcher's getting the ball, she's resetting, going back here, touching some stuff, doing this, coming back, right? Catcher's going, hey, we got two. Outfield's going two down, one to go. You know, we're doing all that stuff, right? Okay, and the next pitch has to happen either way, right? So we talk about riding the wave, right? If you ride a wave as a surfer too low, you're gonna crash into the beach. Oh man, I just struck out, I'm terrible. My team, I let my whole team down. I'm a prodigy of failure. It's all I'm ever gonna be because I can't hit the ball, right? If you ride that wave too high, boom, got a dinger. Boom, got a dinger. I'm the best thing in the world. Nobody better than me. Here comes that slump of dump dump because we don't work as hard, we don't stay humble, and we don't push through. So you ride the wave in the middle, right? Anybody, anybody have those really successful times where you've stood up, you were in the box, it was your turn to hit the ball, you hit the walk off, you won the game, anybody had those? Most of you, if you played the game long enough, have hit a winning ball or laid down a winning bun or moved a runner, right? Anybody was the last out? Boom, strike three looking, ball game. Anybody? Right, okay, and guess what you did the next day no matter what happened? Got back, on. Got back on it, right? Because the game, until you play your last one, right, has another day. That doesn't give us an excuse to not work hard, right? We're gonna talk about turning it up here in a minute, right, because you're here, right? You're here, how many here, 36, 37, 38? Right? And I don't care where, what level, what, le what position, what's, what anything, you're here. Right? Some little girl that's eight years old is watching you. Some little girl that's 10 years old is watching you. Some little girl that's 12 years old is watching you. Right? And not from the bushes like, hey, what's she doing? Right? They're watching how you act. They're watching how you talk. They're watching how you speak. They're watching how you play the game. They're watching how you fail and handle that and recover. Right? Cool, let's keep it going. All right, so if I say I'm out here, it's a thought provoking question. What thoughts enter your mind when you step into the batter's box or take your position on the field? The game just started, right? I'm getting ready, boom, we're, we're, we're not the home team, we're the away team, we're, we're, we're getting ready to bat, right? Where is the process? I got my on deck and my, my lead off hitter. Who's a lead off hitter? Okay, love it. So I'm coming to you, right? So boom, first pitch, first game of the season. What's going through your mind as you walk out there? I'm gonna get on base no matter what. Booyah, okay. What makes you that confident? Well, that's just my job, I gotta do my job. Okay, love it, right? So I gotta, I gotta find a quality pitch that I can hit to get on base and do my job, right? Okay, perfect. So that mindset of being able to compete, do your job, get everything rolling. All right, so do you have, that's a positive thought. Right? Anybody comfortable enough to share that they might have some negative thoughts? Like, oh no, maybe I'm not here, maybe I'm not there, or everybody's just booyah ready. Go ahead. I feel like sometimes I say like I gotta do this instead of like I wanna do this and stuff. Like I have like that kind of negative, like I know I'm out here for a reason, but like, oh my gosh, like I have to do this for my team, like I don't need to, I, I stress, I guess. Yeah. No, I, I, love what you, I love what you said, right? I have to do this versus I want to do this, right? Hey, give, you, give you an example, right? Hey girl, we going to the mall, right? Hey girl, we going shopping. Hey, we're going to practice. Hey, we're going to work out. Hey, we're going to buy a new car. Hey, we're going to get some good food. Hey, we're going to get this guy's tacos, right? I want to do that. I feel good about that. I'm engaged in that, right? I gotta go run a 5K and I gotta go lift weights and I gotta go study and I gotta do this and I gotta do that, right? That's what you have to do, 
but I love that if I could change the mindset and turn it into this is what I want to do how much better can we be right because if you're not here and I'm not saying this about what you said right because this goes in and out right there's times where you're like heck yeah I'm ready to go and then there's some days where all of us anybody ever just like today ain't my day right right okay and those are the those are the days that all of this is about right those are the days because life is what happens when you're planning something else right that's what we call life when you're planning to do one thing it hits you with the right turn then you have to adjust and you either do or you don't right and if you do then you find that adjustment you find what the next path is and you can continue to move forward and make progress and if you don't <laughs> Well, you let me know what that looks like, right? Okay, how do these thoughts impact your performance? If you go out, I know I'm gonna get on base, right? How does that impact your performance? Do you find that I'm on base? Hey, how y'all doing? 60 feet, can't be beat. Okay, very good, right? And understand, if she finds herself on base four out of 10 times, what is, how much is she hitting? 400, is that, is that a baller? If I can get four hundo, I'm good to go, right? Four hundo at this level is extremely amazing, right? But what does that mean about the other six? Okay, we can use the we can use the big the big uh, F word there of failed, right? Uh, and you didn't succeed by getting on base; you failed to make or produce a hit. But there's so much more that comes out of that. Right? There's so much more that comes out of that. The first at bat, now I get to see her. Now I get to see what she's got. I get to get into the vibe. I get to settle into what I'm doing, right? So again, not every pitch, excuse me, every pitch that comes in, the next one is what happens. Ma'am. I just want to add on, like a lot of times, like I'll see kids do a great hit and it happens to go right to an outfielder and they act like they just struck out and I'm like, I just don't like when I hit like that, even if it went right to a center fielder, I'll be like, oh, really good hit. That went really hard. And it's like, Perfectionism, performance-based results, right? If I can't go home about it, then I then it wasn't good, right? And but but if you want to be, look how many girls in this room, right? And I'm not saying you hit a, a, a fly ball like Coach was just talking about. You, <laughs> yeah, I got out, man. That was a good hit, right? That's not what I'm looking for. But at the same time, like you shouldn't be. Right? Like, you shouldn't be doing those things, right? That's, that's not what we're here for. If you are college athletes, student athletes, again, someone's looking up to you, right? Think about all the girls that played this sport to get where you're at and didn't, right? Not only do we talk about self-talk and how you owe yourself humility and respect and the ability to be able to get up every morning and, and push forward, right? But, but you owe it to every girl that would love to be able to play this game and can't, right? They just sit there and they watch you and they would love to be able to do it, but for whatever reason, they can't, right? Take that every day. When you put your feet on the ground in the morning, it's gotta be about turning it up. What time do you do weights? Let's say we're in spring season. What time is weights? You do morning or evening? So you do morning, 7 a.m., right? Okay, right? So when you show up, like it shouldn't be, hey, what's up, guys? All right, like, like, bruh. Like you gotta bring it. Like you gotta bring it because if you don't bring it, then when, it, when, when you're sitting here going, hey girl, that was a great hit. Like I don't wanna hear you. I don't wanna hear you, right? Like I want you to have an opportunity to show up every single day, right? And that opportunity starts the moment the alarm goes off, right? It's that cliche, no snooze button, right? Anybody in here have goals and aspirations to be an All-American? I, I, and maybe you don't, I don't, it's up to you, but does anybody want to, right? If you do, raise your hand high, own it, right? Okay, right, don't be afraid to go, yeah, I wanna be an All-American. That's not what's gonna make you an All-American, right? Making you an All-American is gonna be, yeah, that's me. She is me and I am it. And if you don't think so, wait, cause like Hammer, I'm too legit to quit. You understand what I'm saying? I did that, like, you see her eyes? She was like, whoa, right? I'm just saying like, if you want something, who holds you back at this point in time, Right, you're, you're 19, 20, 21, 22. Like no one has a tether on you, right? When class is over and workouts are over, you decide if you sit down and eat Cheetos or you go for a run. 
You decide if you sit down and eat another, drink another Starbucks or go and hit a bucket. You decide what greatness level you want. That's it. Somebody's getting it in here and somebody's gonna wake up tomorrow and be like, mm -hmm. watch this girl, right? And somebody in here is just going, okay, what time is this dude done? And it'll, it'll determine, you'll be able to tell, right? Because y'all are gonna watch and over the next couple of, of things that we do, right? You're gonna see somebody go, mm. And you're like, golly, what's wrong with that girl? She caught that fire, <laughs> right? I'm telling you, you control you. All right, let's go. Can you think of a moment? This is number two down there. Can you think of a moment where you mentally shut down or felt overwhelmed in a game? <laughs> Love it. The ball just found me every time. Okay, and you were just like, ah, I don't want it. I don't want it. Like, <laughs> like, like, what do you? I couldn't come out, I couldn't come out with the out. Okay. That ball just found me every gotcha. time that game until my coach was like, you know what, you, you, we, we gotta pull you. What position were you playing? Uh, second base. Okay, so you're playing second base, and, and I'm here, I'm feeling boom, error, right? Boom, overthrow, boom, error, and you're just like, okay. Like, what's your name? Delaney. Delaney, okay, so Delaney's sitting there going, okay, and then coach just pulled you? Yep. You went to the dugout and did what? I, I thanked her, actually. Okay. I knew that she was doing it for the better of myself and for my team. Right, that's a great point, because sometimes don't we just need a break? Right, the world, since we were 10 years old, says, ma'am? I was the first up and she was like, thank you so much because immensely I'm just not here right now. Yeah. That was like her exact word. And was that hard? No. Okay. It wasn't because I knew that, I, like I said, it was for the better for myself and for my team. Yeah, that's good. And I love that. And it sounds like you have trust within your coaches, which makes it a little bit easier. You know that one bad game is not the end of my season or any fatal errors or anything that's going to absolutely destroy my standing on the team, right? Uh, and sometimes we're afraid to voice those concerns. Right, we wanna, I, I have that kind of social media mentality of everything's fine, I'm okay, I'm hitting, life is good, working out, yes girl, life is good, everything's fine, I'm good, okay, yep, here we go. Sure, one more poll coach, you got it, no problem. <laughs> right, like, I, you know, it, it is what it is, but again, like, you know, it's, it's fun, but it's fun because you know internally there's things you don't say. Right? And there's things you want to say, and there's things that you need to say, and for some reason we don't. Right? And it's those things that when you don't say them, bottle up and become anxiety. And it's those things that you don't say that bottle up and become bad decisions and become, you know, moments in our room where we're crying alone and wondering how the heck we got here and where the heck we're going next. Right? Those moments happen, right? Whether they happen to you or the person next to you. I know they've happened to me a few times in my life. Right, they happen. So, you know, that's where you have to trust somebody, right? Find some resources, know that people are around to help you, seek out people that have your best interest and talk to somebody. Because when you can get that out, right? When you can say, thank you for giving me a break. Thank you for actually pulling me out of the well instead of going, ah, you know, get back down there. I need 15 more outs, right? So that's good, that's a good break. I love it. All right, let's turn the page. That time is not right. How much time do I have? 30 minutes, we got plenty. Beautiful. All right, cool. List two strategies you can use to focus your mindset during a game when you're feeling stressed or, anx or anxious. Anybody have anything that you're just like, boom, here we go, I'm in. Sometimes when I'm in the infield, like, I'll kind of like kick the dirt around a little bit, just like make myself feel grounded, like, like make myself feel like smaller, like almost like it's bigger than me. Okay. I love it, right? Slowing that moment down, knowing that this is just one small piece of a much bigger picture, right? That no matter what happens in this moment, the next play, the next pitch, the next moment, because that's life, right? Right? I always tell the people that, that work for me and the kids that I coach, like, I care. If you need something, come talk to me. I'll give you a hug. I'll give you a, I'll give you a five dollar bill. I'll take you and get you lunch. If you need a day off, I'll do that. You can, you know, whatever. But the world, it does not care. It doesn't, right? Something goes wrong, pay your rent, I don't care. Pay your car payment, I don't care, right? Some of you, you, it doesn't care. People care, most people, right? They'll give you breaks, they'll give you this, they'll give you that, but the world itself as a whole, you have to keep pushing because it, it doesn't care. It doesn't care how you feel, it doesn't care what you want, it do, it's just there for the exchange of life. And the exchange of life is just that. Anything you give, you have to take it will take. Anything it gives, it will take. Nothing comes without an exchange, right? You want greatness, you gotta work hard, 
right? You wanna be at the bottom, do nothing, right? Each thing is an exchange, an action and a reaction for what you're going to get for where you wanna go for yourself. That's it. Name me a situation in a time where something happened to you in your life, anything that wasn't an exchange. You can't. We always have to give, whether it's time, energy, money, space, whatever it is, you have to give something in order to get where you're going. Cool, how does your physical preparation reflect on your mindset? Do we have any like workout hawks in here? Like I really got it, go ahead. What's your name? Um, Cameron. Cameron, got it. Uh, it helps me, uh, my physical preparation helps me feel more prepared. So instead of waking up and laying in bed for like an hour Yeah, I mean, that's, it really is like that's, you see me wearing the shirt, right? 60 for me, intentional effort, 60 on my hat. Like there's 24 hours in a day. Everybody agree with that, right? 24 hours in a day. If I take one of those hours, that's 4% of my day, right? Not very good at math, but look, Ella's like, uh, yep, that's 4% of my day, right? It's 4% of my day. Now I take that 4% and I give it to me. No one else. No, nope, it's okay, it's all right. That's why I'm standing here explaining it. Right? If I take my hat off, people think it's my age. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good, right? It's no big deal, right? So what it is, is it's, look at her, she's okay. Look, that's, that's life. If you can't laugh at, at, at what happens and what goes on, then what are we doing? Right, you get one spin and one turn around this world, right? And if you're miserable your whole time doing it, eight people are gonna stand up and speak when you pass either way. So you might as well enjoy it. Other than that, life's gonna continue to move on, right? So physical preparation, let me finish that story, right? So 60 minutes a day for you to be able to be your best self, right? If I said to you, do you spend 4% of your life focused on you? Right, you're like, 4% of my life, yeah. Yeah, I do, sure, that's a, that's a really small number. But is it intentional, right? You wanna be the best softball player? How much actual hard work are you putting in? Well, coach says I'll be at weights at seven to nine. Okay. Right, like when you leave that gym, are you like, are you cranked? Are you like, ah, girl, let's go. Wop, 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 like, let's go. You understand what I'm, I'm just saying, right? Are you, or do you walk out of there and you go, well, that was fun, time to go to Starbucks because you don't want greatness. I'm just, so, I'm sorry, right? because that's not what your body needs, right? It's, and it just depends on where and who you truly wanna be, right? Because there's levels to greatness. There's levels to where you wanna go, right? So when you go to practice, right? Are you going hard? Are you throwing that ball as hard as you can in order to make sure that practice is just like the game? When you're in there hitting, are you just Or each rep, are you sitting there focused, ready? Boom, I got 10 to the left, I got 10 to the center, I got 10 to the right. I have intentional effort in order to be able to do what I need to do in order to be able to laser engage and focus so that no one, not myself or anyone around me can question my intent. Greatness is my choice and no one's stopping me from it. Are we at that level? Because if you're not, what are you doing? What are you doing? Every time I ask that question, everybody goes, hmm, what am I doing? I, I don't know, right? I can tell you what I'm doing, right? I'm working hard, right? Nobody is outworking me. Nobody's outworking me in the tournament business, the taco business, the mental health business, the workout business, nobody. And if they are, I ain't met them yet because when I get them, I'ma beat them, no, right? Nobody. Every day when I wake up and my feet hit the ground, that's it, right? Greatness just woke up. Right? And that's funny, right? And I don't say that. I'm not a cocky dude. If you've known me for five minutes, I'm a very humble, giving, going out of my way, doing whatever I can for people. But the world, I walk around with a metal shield every day, protecting a wife, two kids, right? A world, businesses, it's ugly out there. So I attack it every day with my best self. Period. Okay, that's it. All right. How does your physical training impact your confidence, right? We'll talk about that for a minute, right? Your confidence, go ahead. Um, I feel like it makes a big difference because when you can play without inhibitions, knowing that you've done everything you can to get you to that point, uh, you play much better. Yeah. 
I love have that swag. Don't, don't get quiet on that part. She's like, when you work out, you can feel good and you have that swag. <laughs> Come on, girl, have the swag, right? But that's what it takes, that mentality of, I know, me, I put in everything I can for this moment. When that first pitch comes and that leadoff batter goes into the box, everybody around her in that dugout knows this is the work, this is the place, this is where we're going, and everybody better get out our way. Does that mean you're gonna have an undefeated season? I hope so, but we'll see, right? But if you don't, then you go back into the lab, you take those emotions, you take that learning, and you work, right? Whether you go 50 and I don't even know how many games you got, whether you go 50 and two or you go two and 50, it's hard to find that middle of the wave, but guess what? You still gotta wake up the next day and do what? <laughs> go to work. So you can either be mad and miserable doing it, or you can embrace it and become your best self. Cool, let's keep going down. Let's go down to part three, discussion. Anxiety can feel like a weight holding us back. What are some of the triggers of this game? What are some of the things that happen in our game that cause stress and anxiety? Go ahead. Errors, errors cause stress and anxiety. What else? Backroom. Losing, Losing right, okay. We just lost the home opener. Now we're 0-2. Right, okay, so everybody's starting to get a little tight, right? It's like in the taco world when the rush comes and, and, and everybody comes to eat at the same time, everybody's like, get off me. And then when it's over, we're like, I love you, you know? But same thing here, right? Like if the team starts to, you know, maybe has a couple back-to-back -back losses or two or three, everybody in here starts to get a little tight, starts to get a little irritated, starts to get a little agitated, right? Except for that girl that is sitting there quietly working her tail off. Right? She's sitting there and she's in the gym and she's at practice and she's knocking on the coach's door going, hey, how can I get better? Right? And you're sitting there pouting going, we just lost. And she's sitting there going, I want to turn. I could probably help us win. Right? So wins and losses are going to stack up either direction. You know how you get more wins? Be great. Work harder. Talk. Communicate. Right? Get in the gym, get in the lessons, talk to my coaches, talk to my teammates, build a bond, rely on each other. Right? Make it about more than just wins and losses. Make it about a unit, a goal, an objective. Right? Set, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, set team goals, set team objectives. What are our daily goals? What are our weekly goals? Where do we wanna be in December as a team? How does our communication gonna look? How does our fielding gonna look? How is our hitting gonna look? What's our pregame look like? What's our routine look like? What's our music look like? What's our vibe look like, right? Can everybody name everybody on this team, right? Don't answer that, but if you can't, get engaged. Right? And if you can, good. Right? What's their parents' names? What's their cousins' names? What's their favorite color? What do they do on the weekends? What color is their car? If you truly want to be invested and win championships, it takes you doing something you've never done before. Turn it up, level up, get engaged. Don't just say you want to win. Ha, come on. I'm crazy, bro. Come on. <laughs> All right, it can, anxiety can often feel like a weight holding us back. So errors, right? How about three, two count, two outs, runner at second base. I gotta hit this ball to tie it up. Stressful situation. No, everybody just like cool as a cucumber. No big deal. Boom, dinger. Ha, walk off. Got him, right? Okay. Mm. How about you? I'm calling you. You love yeah you. You love my tacos, so you can tell me. Stressful situation in softball. Nope, not her. You. Oh, running. Running, okay. Everybody has one, is that right? While you're all super women, none of you are super woman, right? Does that make sense, right? So, so running, I don't like running, stresses me out. What about running stresses you out? The fact that I have to run. That's why you joined a, Ford, a sport that only goes 60 feet at a time? Yeah, like, I hear the word run, I get out of run harder. <laughs> <laughs> So if I said raise your hand if you're the best runner in the room, you would not raise your hand? I'm bad, but I'm not raising my hand. Okay, I got it. All right, cool. How does anxiety show up in performance? Does it slow us down? Right, can it have the opposite effect though? Can anxiety get us locked in? I think it can, so depending upon who you are, right? It's like me, my, my brother tells me that I work in controlled chaos. Right? The crazier that situations are, the more things that I have to do, the more things that are going right or wrong but happening all at the same time, like I do well in that arena where he's the exact opposite. If there's more than one or two things that are happening, he's like, ah, somebody come take this. Right? So uh, we all have different levels, but how does anxiety show up in performance negatively? 
Anybody have a negative situation where like, I was super stressed out and I just whiffed? I didn't make it, right? Go ahead. Okay. Okay, you play third base? Yes. Okay. All right, so, and, and, and so what was the outcome of that? Uh, they, scored. they scored that tied it or put them up 5-3? Uh, they scored that, put them up 5 -3. Okay, all right, and, and, and so when the play was over, you went back to the circle, everybody's like, my bad, my bad, boom, 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 let's get it, right? And then what happened next play? I got the next play, so. Right. Right, so, I mean, sometimes that happens. We're sitting there, it's a 4-3, we're playing international ball, right? Like, sometimes the moment just gets there. So how do, we, how do we handle that moment to where we handle more of those better? It all starts with how I started this conversation, right? Who's the best pitcher in the room? Who's the best hitter in the room? It's a mindset evaluation, right? How do I feel about myself, right? You can tell me how you feel about her, right? How to make her better, how to bring her up when she gets down, how to make everything that she's going through. We can all sit there and go, it's okay, girl, I got you. You know you can play, you know you're good. You know next game, it's gonna be all right. You know the next at bat, it's gonna no, be no big deal, right? But we go in to our own mind and go, what's wrong with you? How come you couldn't get that? How come your coach is gonna, right? It's, it's all of those things. So how do we change that? You change the talk internally first, right? You look in the mirror and you go, you know what? <laughs> Nobody's perfect, but I gotta work it again and again till I get it right. Ha, <laughs> I did it again, right? You understand what I'm saying? But it's, it's just, it's true, right? Like you have to be able to stand up and fight for you and a lot of those situations, right? It's what I talk about being better internally so I can help everybody else. If you were maximized in your mindset, in your body, in your soul, in your sports, in your athleticism, right? Because you are focused internally on you, does that not radiate to every single one of these other girls? And do you not play better for them, perform better for them, cheer better for them, support them better, right? And then she goes, well, dang, what's she got going on? I want some of that. And then the one in the back goes, hey girl, I need some of that. Right, and now everybody starts leveling up. It's typically how it works, right? So who's gonna be the one in here to light that fire and help everybody get leveled up? Is that you? Love it, okay. There she is, I mean, she was just like me, right? So now, right, so the next level of that is accountability. It's all great to say I'm great. It's all great to say I wanna be great. It's all great to say I'm gonna do this, right? But how do we actually follow through when the bad days happen, on the days that we wanna hit the snooze button, on the days that we don't feel like getting up, right? When we have bad times or bad things that happen or good things that happen, how do we get people to keep us on that middle? Right, that's accountability, having an accountability partner, right? Having somebody that you can rely on that's gonna tell you the truth. Like, girl, like you killed it today. It was absolutely amazing, man. I'm so proud of you. I've been seeing the work you're doing, right? Don't take this the wrong way, but like, girl, the last week, like I have not seen you here. Like you have not been doing like what you need to do. Anything going on? How can I help? Right, like being engaged with everybody. Cause there's four of them to what? 36 of you? Right, so what's that, that's a nine to one? How's my math, is that good? Right, so, so that means there's nine of you for every one of them, right? So that means that you all have to help support that accountability, right? You all have to help support each other because at the end of the day, right, even though we're fighting for the same position, even though we're fighting for one of those nine spots in the lineup, right, you're still gonna walk across the stage and graduate. You're still gonna have to help each other fill out applications, graduation stuff. You're still gonna have to help each other study and do all the papers and the real life stuff, right? Softball's important and it's everything that we're here working for and that's why we're here, to be engaged and win a what? Win a natty, right? Otherwise, right, we're, we're here to keep them employed and win natties, right? And get an education and keep moving forward and build sisterhood and do all of those things. So if you're gonna be here, let the bells chime. Right? <laughs> okay. If you're going to be here, let the bells chime and be here. Don't just show up. Don't just say present. Bruh. Don't just say present. Right? Like when they told you in class, here, are you present here? Right? No. Like engage. Be an F-14 Tomcat. Right? Have some laser radar that locks into your target and just go blow things up. 
Because if you're not doing that, why are you here, right? Like you could just tell mom and dad at this point, my bad, <laughs> sorry, right? I'm gonna go be a doctor, I'm gonna go be an engineer, I'm gonna go be a hairstylist, I'm gonna go be a, you know, whatever you wanna be. But if you're gonna be here and you're gonna play softball and you're gonna engage, do that, right? Let's keep it rolling. What time, what was that, 5.45, is that what the bell? Look at that, baller. All right, 15 minutes. Somebody hit me with the 10 minute warning. So that means I got about five more minutes and then we'll wrap it up. We'll go through any questions that you may have. Um, and yeah, cool. All right, we talked about that. In the batter's box, let's talk about that. Why do you currently do, what do you do? So when I feel anxious or overwhelmed, if I get in those situations, right? How do you get out of them? Go ahead. Personally, I just go for it. Okay. So you gotta, it just all boils up. It's like, it's almost somebody, they're like, it's, it's performance anxiety where they throw up on the side and once they get that out, like, you know, guys do that in baseball a lot, right? You ever seen that, right? Guy just like, ah, boom, now he's in the game, life's good, right? He knows what I'm talking, he's like, yeah, I've seen that before. Josh, you know what I'm talking about, right? They're all like, throw up, no, we just, just, no, we don't do that, I love it. All right, cool, so, what, you, what I would tell you is, is some things that you can use in order to be able to bring that stress, right? Is it starts with you when you wake up in the morning, right? Talking to yourself positively, visualizing how your day is gonna go, right? If I stub my toe, is that the end of the day or am I gonna be able to move forward, right? How am I moving my day forward in a positive direction, weaving and bobbing through the things that negatively affect me? Right? And then when you have these breaks, when you have these moments, right? When you're sitting in, even if you're sitting in the dugout, you're getting ready for your first at bat, right? It's called visualization. It sounds funny, but like literally seeing yourself do something before you do it. So that way when you get into the situation, it's like, okay, even in my own mind, if that's it, I've been here before, right? I know what's gonna happen. I know how far she throws from. I know how far I have to run. I know what happens when the ball goes up, down, and all around. I know how to bring my hands in. I know how to throw my slot. I know how to do all of these things, right? So I'm seeing them, visualizing them, talking to myself internally because, again, she can tell you, man, you're doing okay. But if you walk off and you go, no, you're not. She don't know what she's talking about, girl. <laughs> I've been struggling for weeks, right? Then it's not gonna get any better. So that, that's really visualization, having a routine, right? Knowing that you are trusting your process. Like you're putting in fall workouts right now, right? We got fall practice, we got fall workouts. I don't, I don't know how the whole schedule works, but I imagine you're hitting a ball, fielding a ball, doing all that stuff, right? You're preparing now for spring. Right? If I'm working on my hitting, if I'm working on my hands, if I'm working on my feet, if I'm working on my throwing, right? then work on your anxiety, work on your stressors, work on the things that pull you down. It takes practice. It does not just happen, right? Like a lot of really thinking like, why am I upset about this? What effect is it gonna have if I let it go, right? What effect is it gonna have if I don't? Right? Sometimes we hold on to things so hard that if we would just let them go, we're like, hmm, wow, that was easy. We give pe people and things and situations so much power over us that sometimes it immobilizes us, right? And we go, how did I even get here? When if you just step aside and go, all right, this isn't so bad, let me take the tools and the steps that I need in order to be able to move forward. Cool, how can you consistently bring your best self to your position and make a positive impact? How can you consistently be your best self to what you bring to the game and make a positive impact on this team? Yeah. Have a consistent mental lineup? Yeah. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, that's it, right? Because again, if you don't believe that, who, it, who will? Right, so it's all about routine, trusting yourself, and really just turning it up. I mean, that's it, right? You're all here. You've all started, I'm assuming, at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, right? And at some point in time, it went from my parents put me in softball to play to I'm here, I love this sport, I love the dirt under my feet, I love the grit and the grime of the game, I love sliding, I love throwing, I love that angst. Sometimes I love that, like, 
That's why I came back to coaching because there's nothing like standing in the coach's box during a 3-2 count, putting all the faith in the world in a, in a girl that now has to perform and either being able to pick her up if she doesn't or being able to celebrate her when she does, right? Like we all have the reason that we're involved in this game, right? Changing lives, changing our lives, changing the lives of our teammates. Look at the people around you. The impact that you may have on somebody in this room, you may not even know you're doing it right now. Right? Somebody in this room may be watching you. Somebody, one of your teammates may be secretly like wanting to emulate you, right? And watching everything you're doing because you've had success in the program or they like the way you talk or you've got a great personality, right? So people are always emulating what you do, right? And so have that mentality of I'm the best. Doesn't mean I can't get beat because I'm always working hard. Right? I always have, because if I'm the best today and I do nothing, what am I tomorrow? I'm not any better, right? I'm only the best when I wake up in the morning because throughout the day, I've done everything I can do in order to get better that day. So tomorrow I wake up, boom, I'm number one. And then I bring that to practice, I bring that to workouts, I bring that to class, I bring that to relationships, right? I set boundaries, I don't let anybody put stress and anxiety on me that doesn't belong there. Doesn't mean coach can't go, hey, I need two more buckets. No, Coach Bill said no stress and anxiety. That's not what I'm saying, right? You have to set boundaries for yourself in life though because when you leave here, and, right? And that's what I'm going through now. My daughter is 23 years old. She's been graduated from the game for the last 18 months, right? She's now a professional working as an accountant in downtown Tampa, doing her thing, enjoying life, right? The game did for her exactly what it was supposed to do. Right? It did for Gracie exactly what it was supposed to do. Right? Um, so, so your job now is to continue to push forward because when this ends, right, that next phase, it's now job interviews, it's independence, right? It's life, it's getting my own place, it's moving forward. Maybe it's going back home for a few more years and getting a job and saving and setting, whatever your path is, right? Own it, be the best at it, right? Because eventually uh, this game ends life kicks in and the lessons that you've learned over the 5, 10, 15 years that you play this game uh, will set you up and propel you for the rest of your life. Right? So keep killing it. Go win your national championship. Uh, I will see you again probably in about 30 days. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm anybody. I'll probably send this file ahead of time uh, and you will have a couple of weeks to do it. That way you don't have to stress with classes or practice. Maybe answer a question a day. That way when I come back again, now we all have the answers, we're all engaged, but for, for everybody, I appreciate you uh, responding, being engaged, answering questions, laughing at my goofy jokes, uh, eating the food, and really just having a good time. Anybody have any questions about anything I went over today? Um, anything at all? Coach is good? Oh, can I, can I come Please, come on. I could go for uh, uh, another hour, but I wanna, uh, I, that's why I scheduled two, right? I, and before she comes up here, the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is, is teammates, right? Like, this is almost like the military when you come into a situation like this, right? This is like boot camp, okay? I, I'm just being honest with you. It's not boot camp like left, right, left, keep it in step, right? But it's a group of people that have come together and a lot of you know each other, some of you don't. Right? The psychological process when a team comes together in order to be built goes through three phases. Right? This is real and those of you who have a psychology major, you'll learn about this. Right? There's three phases of building a team. There's storming, forming, and norming. Right? The storming phase is probably what you're in now. School just started. Right? People are getting acclimated to each other. Leaders are emerging. Nobody really knows who everybody is. The leaders that were here last year may be gone. New girls are stepping up trying to be leaders. Freshmen don't know what's going on. Sophomores are like, hey, we just did this last year. Juniors are like, it's finally my turn. I'm the leader now. Right? Seniors are like, girl, you got one more year. Relax. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Like all of these things are happening so it causes a storming phase, right? These little groups start and we go out on a Friday night. Girl, you know what I'm talking about, right? These little groups stay and they Bible study and they become a group here, right? These people come and everybody figures out who they are, right? Okay, and that's what's happening, right? And that can cause good things to happen. People get closer, they have bonds, they have units, they have all of these things. That can cause a lot of bad things to happen. Right? This girl talks about this girl. This girl don't respect that girl. This girl don't appreciate this girl. Right? If you want to win a natty, that is the exact opposite way to do it. 
the exact opposite way, right? So the first part of the psychological phase of building a team is storming, meaning we all come together, we're all trying to figure out who each other is, we're all trying to work through the chaos of building a team. Okay, the second phase is forming. Now people are starting to figure out who each other is, right? Who they are, right? What their roles are, okay? Outfielders now know we go out here. Infielders now know we go over here. Catchers now know what their work is. We know what time practice is. We have our class schedule. We're now starting to learn who each other are, okay? And we're starting to build, and the last phase is forming. Once the unit is together, coaches have now identified leaders, leaders, leaders have risen up, people are now collectively working together and communicating, and then you get into either navigating that process or that team performing and excelling because they've worked through that, right? So if you really want to be the best, if you really want to build a championship program here, if you really want people to you know, recognize your school and what you're doing, right then work hard for that right trust each other right the quicker you can get through each one of those phases and get on to performing right the better you will the more wins are going to come the less stress will come the less anxiety will come right and you get to that point by listening to the people that are establishing the rules having open dialogue and conversation navigating those tough moments and not not talking about them that's how championship programs are built. That's how championship teams are built. I've built hundreds of teams that have won lots of championships in softball. And more importantly, I've built teams in life. I've built million dollar businesses. It works the same way every single time. Okay, and if you can get through those processes, you will be an unstoppable force. But any one of those can hold you up for a long time if you can't work through them and it can really stall what you're trying to do and really make their jobs a whole lot harder because they have to handle other things outside of softball and coaching and making you great people, right? This is not high school. This is not home. This is not any of that, right? This is a, this is a college that most of you are getting paid, whether it be through scholarship, financial, athletic, academic, NIL, whatever, right? You're, you're all for the most part getting some or trying to, whatever your situation is, get somewhere. Right? So that happens together as a unit, as a team. The sooner you can do that, <laughs> the better you'll be. Then you get to get one of these things and be like, hey y'all, uh. And you get to put it on the gram. It's hard to believe when we've hit rock bottom. It's hard to believe when, you know, everything is there just saying, you know, I can't, I wouldn't, I shouldn't, I couldn't, I won't, right? But if you let one piece of punctuation control your life, right? You drop that apostrophe, that T falls off, and it's, I can, I will, I should, I would, right? You let one little apostrophe control your total outcome. Don't give it that much power, right? Hit the backspace, don't let the T attach, right? And just go do what you wanna do, right? You get one, I say this all the time, you get one spin around this rock, that's it. And when it's over, you will never be again, right? We're getting to a point in a digital age where when you pass away, you can put a QR code on your, on your gravestone now and it's videos of your life. So anybody who walks by can, can see what happened to your life, right? I mean, that's where we're going, like that pops up. I'm starting to think I'm getting old. That pops up in my feed now and I'm like, what's going on? Like, you know, but you can, right? And, and we're just getting to an age now where, you know, yeah, you, 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 you have those memories, but when it's over, it's over. You can't record anything else. There's no more this or that. Like, so while you're here, right? Use that spin, make an impact, right? Go change the world. And that starts, like coach said, internally changing you. All right, well, thank you. Take the tacos home.